All right, how's it going, guys? I'm Jake, and you're watching Dude Ranch DIY. Today, we are joined by a special guest, Gary. Um, you are from Connecticut. I am, yep. And you're a viewer of the channel. I am. And we've been talking back and forth for a while, just, you know, about firewood and all the finer things in life. <laughs> and uh, we're here today. He's brought some of his equipment and I'm gonna be showing you the grapple and right. just my firewood setup and we're gonna make a little bit of firewood here. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. The sun uh, is coming out, warming up. A little chilly, but it's nice. A little yeah. chilly, but you got your Kinko's on. I do, I do. <laughs> Thanks to you, I've had. I spent a great deal of money on Kinko gloves. I got my got my wood wood crew each a, each a, a set. I told them they could have one to try them out, but they wanted both their gloves. So yeah, <laughs> I think I'm four or five pair deep into the Kinko gloves now. Yeah, they're they're good. I'm still on that same same pair. They're starting to get a little beat up. A little, but, uh... little beat up, but they're good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Well, why don't we get moving so we can warm up and uh, head back to the woodyard? Sounds great. All right. All right, guys. So Gary and I just hooked up the 55 inch Wicked Grapple here to the Kubota tractor. Um, a little bit of problems uh a little bit of struggle little little struggle in there one of the hydraulic fittings was a little bit frozen so i had to uh blow a little hot air on it to get it to to free up so that we could click it on all the way but it's on um and gary has brought some of his equipment here um he's got a john surid John Sarid. John Sarid. 630 Super 2. This one's yeah. like uh, 20 years old. 20 years old. It's a funny story behind it, but we'll save that for another another day. And then <laughs> I replaced my steel. I had an 028, I believe it was, and I replaced it with this 441, uh, which is roughly a five horsepower saw just uh, a couple of years ago. So it's probably only got, you know, 20, 30 quarter wood through it, but it's a... It's a formidable saw. I'm um, I'm very impressed with it. Very impressed with it. Nice saw. Yeah. And then you got these two PVs here. Yeah, this one is uh, aluminum handle PV. And then this one is actually from Bangor, Maine. This is from PV Manufacturing. And uh, I actually drove up there to get it. These This company, PV, holds the original patents on, uh, on PV. So uh, it was... Uh, quite a trip up there from Connecticut to get it but uh, I absolutely love it and uh, I'm gonna be refinishing the handle ordering a new sticker for them from them to uh, bring it back original but uh, it's been a great tool a, a big back saver it saved a lot of chainsaw in the dirt activity if you will so, oh yeah it's a beast too yeah. I love the wooden handle yeah and then the other, the other yeah. real useful tool that I use this last thing uh, that that Gary brought. We're going to be trying out. This is how he cuts his firewood. And t tell the tell the people what kind of tractor do you have? So I have a John Deere 110 TLB, which is a tractor loader backhoe. It's a 43 or 45 horse, and uh, I have a welded hook on the middle of the bucket. So this goes on the uh, welded hook, and then I pick the logs up and cut them at waist height. And uh, Jake and I were talking about that. Um, quite a bit this morning about uh, how I handle it. I'm, of course, I'm a little older than you are, so uh, I like not to cut on the ground whenever possible. So th this has become an invaluable tool in my wood yard. Right, and I was telling Gary how um, a lot of people give me comments and they ask me why I don't use the grapple to pick up logs and, you know, cut them in the air. And the, honestly, guys, the reason is, is because my grapple is 55 inches wide and my trailer is 14 feet long. So I, I, when I bring home logs, I don't cut them, you know, to, to a full 14 foot. I usually cut them to about, you know, 12 foot at, at the max. Yeah, you have to, and be by, able to fit them in, right? Right. And then by the time that I pick them up, you lose 55 inches with the grapple and I cut my wood to 18 inches. So I'm really only getting like one or two rounds off each side until I have to drop it back down on the ground anyway to finish making the rest of the cuts. So it really doesn't make sense, but I never thought of using log tongs on the grapple to pick up the log and just kind of balance it. And, and cut it in the air, which it, which is super right. simple. And it's not a perfect it's not a perfect tool. You end up out of balance some time and all that. You're always making one or two cuts on the ground. But um, if you if you got a real long one, you just pick it up partially. 
and uh, cut all those off and just move, keep moving the hook down. Usually it's a two person operation in my wood yard while I'm cutting. So, right. but you can do it on and off the tractor by yourself, but it's, it, it literally saved my back. I could never produce, you know, 15 cord a year um, with my dad and my son without uh, using every tool possible in the shed, if you will. Yeah, and like you said before, keep it simple, stupid. It simple, and, stupid. you know, those log tongs have been in use for hundreds of years, and they'll continue to be. Here's another one, a wood hook. You don't see this very often on the channels, on the uh, the uh, woodcutter channels. But uh, I did see one the other day. One of the guys was using it. Uh, but I've been using this for years to pick up rounds. You still do have to bend over and, you know, grab an end or stab it in to pick it up. It is, it is a big help, but you don't see that around. Right, so I'm going to be trying your log tongs, which I have sets of log tongs, just never used them for this use. And you're going to try my hookaroon. I'm going to try your hookaroon, and I'm, I want to get a real good look at this grapple because I'm in the market for one. And um, you and I uh, have, have seem to be looking at the same things on, on YouTube and on the Internet. So uh, I've been looking at the uh, the Wicked 55 as well. So... All right, well, let's uh, fire up the tractor, and we got some Norway maple logs that have been here for quite some time, um, since before the first big snowstorm we got. But we're going to pick them up with the grapple, and we'll pick some up with the log tongs, cut up the rounds, and then we'll push them over to the rug and made splitter like you guys have seen in the past. All right, guys, so we got Gary on the L3901. And he is using, trying out the Wicked Grapple for the first time. He's going to be picking up this Norway maple log here. And then we'll bring it on over and show the, the two differences in cutting, both with the log tongs and uh, just, you know, holding up the log in the air with the grapple. Guys, so we got the log up in the air, and uh, Gary's got his saw, and he's gonna start cutting some rounds here. And I'm gonna show you the difference between cutting in the air with the grapple, why I don't do it, versus cutting in the air with Gary's log gun. And uh, we're gonna see the difference, and I think I'm probably gonna adopt his method of using the log tongs in the future just to keep everything up off the ground. one side and now we'll probably be able to get another two over on this side and then you pretty much have to open up the grapple and drop the rest of the log to cut I don't know maybe three or four more rounds out of the center <laughs> tongs here um, we went around the bottom tines of the grapple and Gary's gonna show me how he uses these to uh, to pick up the logs and stuff so we got it there nice and shortened up 
and we're gonna pick up the rest of this log here to, uh, to finish cutting. Yeah, nor well, it's frozen too. Yeah. But um, all right, guys. So you just saw the inaugural run there of using the log tongues, and it worked really well. Um, you know, we you saw Gary cutting cutting the the pieces with it up in the you know in the grapple, but then we we used the log tongs for that last little shorty, and I was able to get three nice cuts out of it. And the tongs are so narrow that I was able to hop right over it with the uh, firewood marking stick and cut them real easy. So now we're going to try something that I guess, Gary, you do this at home, right? Where you pick up long logs and then yeah, after I skin them out, I usually try to keep the logs as long as possible. And then I'll grab it, you know, with 10 feet sticking out or so and, and cut that 10 feet. And then I can get on the tractor and, uh, you know, just drop it down a little bit and slide that the tongs down the uh, down the log and pick them back up, and somebody can be cutting. Usually, it's a two-person operation. Somebody's on the tractor and somebody's cutting. Mm -hmm. Now, so, you said sometimes you've gotten so good that you're able to stay on the tractor and get the tongs. That's correct. On the log. That's All right. Correct. Well, so I'm gonna see. Try my hand at that now. I'm gonna hop on the tractor and we're gonna see if I can finagle the log tongs over one of these snow-covered maple logs and uh, pick them up like like Gary here. I'm so. sure you'll be able to. <laughs>
Okay guys, so we bulldozed over these Norway maple rounds to be right next to the splitter here. And uh, we're gonna let Gary get on the controls here. I'm going to put the camera in the tripod and uh, go over the controls with him. Um, so this is our auto cycle valve to make this go back and forth. To have it do full auto cycle, you gotta pull both of them and then this one will kick back once it hits the end of the stroke. And then this one will kick back. Um, this is for the log, log lift, lift yeah. and this is for the hydraulic wedge. Um, so why don't we... Uh, you know, it's interesting. My t It's a lot more complicated than my TW1, my timber one. Right, so you have a TW1, Correct. which... It, does it have a log lift on it? It does not. Does, okay, no, so it it's just not. back and in forth. It's, in its single wedge, and I've always been a, a single wedge kind of guy. Um, you know, I'm not selling firewood, it's just for me, so a, another hour at the splitter doesn't bother me. But I've always found, thought that the, I could, I would, my hand would always find a way um, to get, to get in the way, in of, the this, way of, uh, of this multi-wedge. So it always scared me a little. I'd be out there with my son, my son was running it with me since he was, I don't know, 10 years old. So I always thought I just would stay with, uh, with a single wedge. My father-in-law, who is you know, 20 acres, <clears throat> 20 acres next door has the four-way that slips over the top. And he always says, oh, come get the four-way. But I, I just said, no, I'm, uh, I've, I've got all my fingers at this point. I want to keep it that way. So I'll stay with the single wedge. But yeah, as I, mean, I get older, I certainly see the value of, uh, of the multi-wedge. And, and from a time standpoint, uh, obviously it's got to be faster. Right. I mean, it definitely took some getting used to with the four-way and the six-way. And then with the addition of the auto cycle, where your hands don't necessarily have to be on the valve, it, it frees up your hands to make you a lot more productive, but you really got to watch where your hands are, <laughs> as, you, as you'll see. So we'll take it slow and uh, get you used to the controls here, and I'll feed you the wood. And we got an IBC tote right here that I can stack into. So we'll fire it up and get going. Sounds great.
everything about it I like, especially the speed, because my TW1, it has plenty of power. That's and it's. I love the splitter. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it's it, the the return is slow. And what you've done here with the dump valve, well, the dump is, valve, yeah. it's just amazing, right? It, right? It's completely amazing. It's off the scale to what I'm used to. But yeah, the dump valve is great. The guy James at Easy Split, he helped me do some math, and because the cylinder is so big, it the the, the pump and everything on this, it's only a 22 gallon per minute pump and everything is rated for it being stock and speeding up the the, the, the process or, or using the auto cycle and going back and forth we cl quickly realized that all the fittings and everything weren't rated for the amount of flow because this thing down and back over the course of a minute you can go down and back probably like three or four times and that's over 50 gallons of fluid Pumping. going back through this valve which right. is only rated for 28 gallons per minute so you could blow out the, the, the valve or whatever. So he was like, get this dump valve, which will take, you know, whatever it is, 80, 90% of the flow off and speed it up, keep everything cooler because it won't be getting bottleneck True. through the valve. I mean, like you were saying, oh, do you want those little small pieces? And I don't think I've ever explained this to you guys, but um, the reason why you see me throwing in the small pieces here and there and, you know, off the splitter is because I literally get so many of these little pieces and my customers, I'll throw them right in there. So that's, you know, going to a delivery whenever. Next year, this stuff is sold. But um, I would bring logs to people and they're just heating for recreation, their fireplaces, fire pits, whatever. And uh, they would be like, you know, your, your wood is great and it seems really dry, but I just can't get it to light. Like, why is that? And I said, well, how are you lighting the fire? And they were like, well, you know, I take some newspaper and stuff and then I, I light it and I put your logs on top of it. And I was like, well, you need kindling, you know, <laughs> but these people, you know, keep in mind, folks, that we're in Fairfield County, Connecticut, which is uh, it's it's a lot of people that, you know, have have some money and, and don't really know about these kind of things. And when they light a fire, they're doing just that, putting newspaper down, putting logs on top without kindling. So I was like, well, I can get rid of the kindling advertise it sell it oh you're getting kindling with every quart of firewood you buy and i get rid of it and now they're able to to, to burn the wood properly i don't know if it shows on camera this is pretty nice wood you have i'm telling you this is nice nice product the the norway is nice wood it's it's like you know the ash of the maples yeah yeah yep. <laughs> it, it splits pretty straight even if it's knotty and yeah. you know pops open and dries pretty quick too yeah some of you guys have seen my comments about that ready to burn ash it just makes my eyes water when i see him unload a trailer full of that day <laughs> after day after day pretty nice stuff around here, yeah I'll well tell you that. the the emerald ash borer has been a blessing and a curse well uh, i think that's about it guys we're gonna wrap this one up we've been out here for a while Gary has gotten to see a little bit of everything here at uh, the, the Dude Ranch and how we do things and the grapple. And we got to see some of his processes and his two saws and the, the log tongs, which I think I really like that. I think we're going to I think we're going to try that. I think it'll work. And well. I think Chris is going to like it, too. Being six, four and bending right. down to the ground every time yeah. is tough. It's got to be tough on your back, Chris. <laughs> I didn't get to meet Chris this time, but uh, well, I, I definitely want to meet that guy. I don't know. Yeah, if you ever come down, I'll, I'll be sure to get him over here. He just got a hot tub, so he's been uh, oh, I just, just got rid installed. of a hot tub. So oh, Chris, good. you could have gotten <laughs> carries on. <laughs> but um, that's it for now, guys. As I say, if you like this stuff, please hit the like button. Um, if you're a new subscriber, welcome. And uh, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button because we got plenty of this kind of content coming out um, with some new you know, changes coming in the near future. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Any comments or questions, put them in the section below. I'm Jake. This is Gary. You're watching Dude Ranch DIY. We'll see you here next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.